The Bible says that when we are anxious, we must immediately bring our requests and make, make it known to God in Philippians 4, 6, and not stop there, but with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is the proof that I believe God has heard my prayer. If I pray and I don't give thanks that God's heard my prayer, then I'm in doubt. Has he really heard me or not? But the Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. It's one of the great habits that we can develop that can lead us to an unshakable life. Just a little action of gratitude. And gratitude to God and gratitude to men. Jesus said that he would even thank a person who gave a cup of water to one of his disciples. It's a habit which I find in India very few people have of saying thank you sincerely from the heart, being really grateful to human beings who done something for us, and that's because we're not grateful to God. Even some of the songs we sang today, you know, sometimes we can sing. I found that very often we sing without thinking about the words. Can you remember some of the words we sang this morning? The chances are no, because you're so familiar with them that we just sing them. Were there some expressions of gratitude to God there? It's something which we must develop. You know, it's good for you to learn some hymns of thanksgiving and praise that you can sing. I do that very often. It encourages me, encourages me in times when I'm tested or in trial to sing something which just by myself to God, an expression of thanksgiving or gratitude. It says, if you have received a kingdom that cannot be shaken, then let us have gratitude. Gratitude and not <clears throat> take what God has given us for granted. Gratitude is the mark of, one of the marks of a humble man. And the reason why we are not quick to say thank you to people who serve us or help us is because there's pride in us. We've got to face it. There's pride in us which prevents us from being, expressing our gratitude. Some people feel, oh, we shouldn't say thank you and all. It's a... That's a heathen culture that you have acquired if you say, if you haven't learned to say thank you. Don't let the heathen culture influence you. Jesus said even for a cup of cold water, he would give thanks. And there are people who have given us much more than that. We need to be thankful. I sometimes write an email to someone who did something for me years ago or did something for my children years ago. And I say thank you. Because Jesus doesn't forget even a cup of cold water to, that he gives to his disciples. These are little, little habits, you know, that can help us to come to a very godly life. So if you receive a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us show gratitude by which we offer to God an acceptable service. We all want to serve God, but there are certain ways in which God accepts our service. One is if it is an expression of gratitude. The sad thing is that a lot of service for God today, even giving money to God, is not out of gratitude, but wanting something in return. Look at all the churches, multitudes of churches today that preach. If you give money to God, God will bless you. It's on television all the time. 90% of television preachers preach that. You send some money here and God will bless you. That's not gratitude. There you're not giving money to God's work out of gratitude. There you're doing business with God. I give you this, you give me that. In any transaction where you go to God and say, I'll do this for you, you do this for me. That's not the God of the Bible. That's not following Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ never served his father like that. And the apostles never served Jesus Christ like that. So there must never be in our minds this business of, I'm doing something for you, you do something for me. And I want to say all of that is a false teaching. It's true under the old covenant. In the old covenant, God said, if you obey me, I will bless you. I'll reward you. So the moment you get into that realm, you're back in the old covenant. And you're back with all the 
curses of the law for those who don't keep it. You know, the problem with going under the old covenant is there's a curse. I don't know whether you realize that. And that's, that's the reason why some people never seem to make progress in their life because they're living under the law under, where there's a curse. The Bible says, cursed is everyone who does not keep everything in the law. That's the old covenant. So I don't want to go to the old covenant at any time. Jesus has abolished that and brought us into a new covenant. And one mark of the new covenant is, I don't do business with God. If you, if you take some time to read Deuteronomy 28, which I've often quoted, if you obey me, it's a big chapter, which says, if you obey me, I'll do all these blessings, I'll give you all these blessings. And if you disobey me, all these curses will come upon you. I don't want to go into that chapter at all because that's not where I live. I live in the new covenant and I want every one of you to realize this. Don't do business with God. Don't listen to these preachers who encourage you to do business with God. You do something and you believe God will do something for you in return. It could even be in prayer. Lord, you pray and you'll bless me in my exam. That's not why I pray. I pray because I want to fellowship with Jesus Christ. See, there can be this spirit of getting something from God by my giving. And I may be giving money, I may be giving a prayer, I may be giving something. God has to give me something in return. I don't want anything from God in return. I believe uh, the way I look at it is God gave me more than I can ever deserve when he gave his son to die for me on the cross. What more do I want? It's like a man who gave me millions and billions and billions and billions of rupees. Then again I go and ask him for something. That's what the cross of Christ is. And when I see that cross of Christ, I say, Lord, my heart responds not asking you for something more, but in gratitude. And everything I do in my life should be out of gratitude. Receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us show gratitude. Let us show our thankfulness to God for what he's done for us. In the Old Testament, gratitude and thanksgiving only came when God actually did some physical thing for them. He killed Egyptians. And then we read, they sang his praise. But in the New Covenant, we say Jesus has, done, has taken away our sins on the cross. And based on that, my entire life is a way of saying thank you to God. And I hope you see your entire life to be an expression of gratitude to God for what he's done. And then you'll never complain that somebody else is not doing something or somebody else. So what? If the world is full of ungrateful people, why should I be part of that crowd? Let me show you a verse in Philippians which shows the opposite of gratitude. It says in verse 14 and 15 of Philippians 2, we've looked at this verse many times. It's not one of the verses that most churches look at, but we keep looking at it because we want to obey it completely. Philippians 2, 14 and 15. Do all things without grumbling or disputing, that you may prove yourselves to be blameless and innocent, children of God, above reproach in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom your purest lights in the world. The world is a crooked and perverse generation because it is always grumbling and complaining about something. Something I didn't get, something somebody didn't do for me, husbands and wives complaining, grumbling, complaining, and murmuring about something that not done up to my expectation. The solution for all that is gratitude. Lord, I'm immensely thankful for what you've done for me. The only thing I deserve is hell, but you've done a lot more for me than that. And I'll never, never cease to be grateful. I'll never, never cease to be grateful for my husband, for my wife, for my children, for what you've done for me, for giving me a job, for saving me from being a beggar. To have this spirit of gratitude all the time so that grumbling and complaining is completely eliminated from our life. And it says here in verse 15, that is how you show that you're a child of God. Did you see that? That is how we show there that we are children of God in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. And that is how you show yourself as a light in the midst of darkness. Please remember this, dear brothers and sisters. If you're, if you're going to be part of this kingdom that cannot be shaken, show gratitude.
and then that's how we offer to God an acceptable service. Not, the acceptable service is not in the principle of business.